This dirt was once at the bottom of an inland sea that cut a swathe through Queensland some 100, 110 million years ago. Today, the land is covered in fossils that tell a story of life in the time of the dinosaurs. That is a Honda Transalp, a bike once thought extinct, now brought back to life by Honda. Can it survive out here today? Well, that's what we're here to find out, but we're jumping ahead of ourselves. So let's go right back to day one and start the ride. For me, this ride started after boarding an eight and a half hour flight from Brisbane. Thankfully, the friendly flight staff made sure me and the lovely lady I was seated next to had some magazines to read during the trip. We touched down at six different airports until we finally arrived at the little Queensland town of Bulia, home to the mysterious Min Min lights. And this is where I first met the Trans Out, as well as some of the locals. That's how we used to travel through the desert. <laughs> now this is how we travel through the desert. We set up camp on the banks of the Burke River, and by we, I mean the Darrell Beatty Adventures crew. That's Daz, Buddha, and Truckee Scott. You may know Daz best from his previous occupation as a 500cc GP rider, and I'll let a very excited Barry Sheen take it from here. Sorry, we want him to get in there. Go on, Dazza. Beatty Go, Dazza. Go, Go, Dazza. Go, Dazza. Beatty Go, Dazza. 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 Nowadays, Daz runs motorcycle tours throughout remote Australia, from the Canning Stock Route to Cape York, the Simpson Desert to Uluru and well beyond. Darrell Beatty Adventures is your best choice for seeing all the real red dirt stuff in places that will live on inside you forevermore once you've seen them. Our original idea for this ride was to test the trans out with a double crossing of the Simpson Desert, but the unpredictable desert weather had other plans. I'll let Daz explain his new plan. Well, all good ideas have a few hurdles thrown in them. And originally this ride was gonna be a double lap or a loop of the Simpson Desert with Damo. So we were gonna go Birdsville to Oramina, which is uh, Alice Springs. And then we were gonna come back on the Madigan line, literally a couple of days after this Trans Alp 750 was launched. The desert's in flood, it's still in flood. So we stuck to the same dates and thought we'd come from Bullia down through Birdsville, have a look at the Simpson Desert on the Trans Up, at least get a taste of it in the sand, and then work our way sort of zigzagging to South Australia through top of New South Wales and into Queensland. The Trans Alp has some work to do to prove itself, and there's no better testing ground than the Aussie Outback. The huge distances coupled with the erratic and varied terrain can be hard on a motorcycle. To really get to know the bike, we set six days aside and had a rough route planned out with a bit of everything in it. We started our test ride with a 300 kilometer loop out of Bullia while we waited for certain tracks further south to be opened again. Out front was Darrell Beatty Adventures lead rider, best known as Buddha. Buddha is a legend of a bloke who also just happened to have been Mick Doohan's mechanic back in the day. He also spanned for Aussie motocross icon, Jeff Leesk. There were still a few signs of the recent rains, but the water tends to soak into this thirsty ground pretty quickly in these parts. There are a heap of animals about. We saw everything from emus to kangaroos, horses and pigs and cattle, as well as thousands of birds enjoying the new growth just appearing from the freshly watered soil. It was a good run to get acquainted with the bike, but let's grab a quick Trans Alp history lesson before we start tomorrow's run to the iconic town of Birdsville, where the Simpson Desert begins. Honda first introduced the Trans Alp back in 1986, which is two years before the Africa Twin appeared. It was a good looking adventure tour that sold pretty well, particularly in Europe. In 2000 and 2008, the Trans Alp was redesigned and it was a horrendous looking motorcycle that looked like it had suffered through years of inbreeding and in retrospect it should have been hidden from the public. In 2012 Honda mercifully turned the Trans Alp tap off and here we are in 2023 and the Trans Alp has returned. It still has that adventure to revive but it no longer carries that repugnant aesthetic of the past. Honda already has a dirt happy adventure model in the Africa Twin. The Trans Alp isn't here to compete with the likes of the 890 Adventure R, the Touareg or the Tenere. 
it's probably more likely going to go head to head with say the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE or even CF Moto's 800MT. I had a few bits and pieces bolted onto my bike primarily so it went back to Honda in one piece. I'm not sure what they're trying to tell me there. Along with the crash bars, hand guards and bash plate, I also had a larger set of foot pegs that are available through the genuine parts catalog. Over the 500 kilometer run to Birdsville, I got to know the Trans Alp a whole lot better and immediately appreciated the super comfortable seat and the sitting position. I was impressed with how easy it was to use the electronics, especially when you compare that to the more complicated switch block on the Africa Twin. I found a happy place in the customizable user mode with full power dialed up and engine braking dialed down. I had ABS off the rear and I always had traction control switched off, which you really have to do because it is so sensitive that it's completely unusable within even a sniff of some dirt. Under perfectly clear skies, we went looking for some fun to break up the long stretches of nothing ahead of us. After a brilliant day on the bikes where we'd seen everything from the bone dry browns to the intense greens around Clooney Station and the flooded Cutterborough Crossing, we rolled into Birdsville. Did you know Tom Cruise used to be a postman in Birdsville? Yeah, I shit you not. Supplies and mail for lonely cattle stations. Stations measured by thousands of miles where the man living a hundred miles away is your neighbour. And your only link with the outside world is Her Majesty's Royal Mail, Tom Cruise. Neither Tom's old Leyland Badger nor the Trans Alp were engineered specifically to be weapons on the sand. But Tom did it way tougher than I was. Actually, I was having a blast. The Honda actually felt pretty damn confident in the sand. It lacks the ground clearance and the robust suspension you need to push hard. But when it's just all about getting there and not lap times, pick your lines well and you'll keep going and going. Buddha did not pick his line well here. It's a pretty awesome part of the world to visit on two wheels. And I was really impressed with the way the Michelin Anarchy Wilds were handling the sand even at the street pressures that we left them at. Nothing was slowing Buddha down and Daz was having an absolute blast, as he always does on a bike. The further away from civilization this guy gets, the happier he is. Honestly, it's really hard to describe if you've never been out to these places, out into the desert lands. It's, it's featureless. There's nothing here to tell you about. But there's just a vibe. There's just a feeling you get when there are no boundaries, there are no walls, there are no buildings. The sky is enormous. The stars are incredible. The sunrises and the sunsets are unbeatable. You really have to go and see it for yourself. And we've been able to see it this time on the Trans Alp. You can go and see it on pretty much anything, really. Just do it. Fuck Bali, come and see Australia.
First thing in the morning, we're headed off towards the Trans Alps next challenge, the sand dune, known simply as Big Red. So there we go, the Transalp up Big Red. It's really ruddy at the moment. It's been a lot of four-wheel drives up and down up the last couple of days or the last week because of the Birdsville Bash. There's still some people camping in the basin just here. Nursing hangovers, no doubt. But there you go, the Transalp. It feels like there's not an awful lot down low, but when you ask for it, it's there. That was mostly third gear. I had to click down to second because I screwed up just before the top. But that's good fun. That is really good fun. We ducked into the Birdsville Bakery for a good breakfast and for me to take revenge on a camel that bit me on the arm a couple of days before. Camel's pretty good. Mm. It was amazing to see the desert peas blooming as we saddled up and left Queensland, making our way further west and into South Australia, with another 500 kilometre day ahead of us that would eventually end in Inaminka. Wash your beanie, your grub. Deep underneath this desert landscape is the Great Artesian Basin. It's the largest of its kind on the planet. And it's holding an incredible 36,000 million megalitres of fresh water. That's enough water to cover the world's land mass by a depth of half a metre. Everything out here is massive. We made a quick stop along the way to check out the Cadelga outstation ruins, which are now part of Cordillo Downs. Having lived with a few mates during our peak party times, I know exactly how a house ends up like this, and they definitely did not get their bond back. A little bit further down the road is Cordillo Downs, home to Australia's biggest wool shed. We've stopped to visit Australia's biggest wool shed, the world's biggest wool shed, it's the biggest wool shed that I've seen today anyway. I don't know if it's actually that big. I guess it is. I don't know how big wool sheds usually are. It's definitely the biggest wool shed I've seen today. At one point in the past, this shed saw 37,000 sheep shorn by 42 men in just three weeks. That is mind blowing numbers, that is such hard work. It was good to see a plaque commemorating the Afghani Camelias too. If you know your history, you know those guys did a lot to help build this country in the most inhospitable places. On the run into Inaminka, just when we started to get that afternoon weariness, we came upon this amazing red dirt road with just the right amount of sand topping to make it heaven to ride. And it certainly gave us an energy boost. We arrived at Inaminka at about exactly the same time as a thousand caravans, all leaving the Birdsville Bash and heading home. We got a quick reminder of how many tracks were still closed and decided to head out of town to find somewhere quiet to camp for the night. Listen for a heartbeat with everything in motion. Say a word, hold a hand, laughing up. 
With a day of about 620 k's ahead of us, we got rolling at first light and headed directly into the rising sun. Passing by the massive gas and oil projects just outside of Inaminka. The day was going to be pretty much all blacktop, which is where the Transat will inevitably spend a lot of its time being an adventure tourer. The more controlled surface also gave us a chance to measure the bike's fuel range. Having crossed back into Queensland, we fueled up in the little town of Thargaminda. Our fuel gauges were all flashing, but with a little still left in the tank, we'd done 334 kilometres, and I reckon we would have got 350 in no dramas. In fact, the very next day, we would each fuel up after having ridden 356 kilometres. It seems plausible to me that 370 isn't out of the question. Daz let us know he'd found somewhere good for us to pull in for the night. He found it on a website I swear I've never heard of. I'm not 100% sure Charlotte Plains is on Red Tube. I'll take Daz's word for that. But it is a great place to stay. And we were greeted on arrival by the dumbest and most suicidal of all Australian animals. The emu. Still a mystery. One of the great things about the Charlotte Plains camping grounds is that they offer access to the warm waters of the Artesian Basin. I jumped at the chance to replace dust with mud, which I hear is good for the complexion. We got rolling early again the next morning. There's always something magical about seeing sunrise when you're on a bike. We passed through a multitude of small towns. Again, we saw so many different animals along the way. We had about 730 kilometers to knock off in the day. So again, it was mostly blacktop as we left Queensland and headed to the New South Wales town of Tenderfield. And these last couple of days had highlighted the Trans Alps versatility it's true adventure tour of nature just days before we were climbing sand dunes. And now we were knocking off hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of road sections. And while I really wish there was cruise control on the trans out, we were otherwise in complete comfort at all times. In the morning, we suited up for the last time and headed north back into Queensland and home to the Darrell Beatty Adventures headquarters on the Gold Coast. The roads out of Tenerfield are some of the most fun you'll find anywhere and we were loving every minute of it. I found the trans out easier to sit on than stand due to the pegs being further forward than say on a KTM, which honestly suits me because I'm pretty lazy. We had headed out six days and 3,400 kilometers ago. And as we were bringing it home, I spent my time reflecting on the Trans Alp. I honestly think people will fall in love with this bike for precisely what it is. Don't get sucked into a comparison with a Tenere, but do the maths on the cost of a Trans Alp compared to the standard Norden, for example. There's a lot of bike for the money here. I made two changes throughout the ride, which was to lift the gear lever and dial the preload up all the way on the shock and three turns from full on the forks. I was pretty happy with that, although as I mentioned, I'd opt for heavier springs if it was my bike. I'd gear it down as well, but from there, I'd honestly have a good think about replacing my Africa Twin with a Trans Alp. Maybe. Adventure tourers are the Swiss army knives of motorcycles and they must serve many masters from the city commuter, the freeway traveler and the adventurer. Their versatility must be matched by durability and that's how legends are made, just like it was with the original Trans Alp. Honda may have lost the core Trans Alp thread somewhere along the way, but it's found it again. Welcome back Trans Alp, we missed you. <laughs>